Hey, I'm a mechanical engineer, and this is my egg incubator. So if you guys have seen some of my more recent videos, you know that I have some leopard gecko eggs that need incubating. Which of course in order to incubate eggs, you need an incubator. Which brings us to today's video on how to build one. And although I'll be building my incubator specifically for leopard gecko eggs, the incubator itself will of course be able to handle any type of egg. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So to begin, the first thing they're going to need to get is a small foam cooler like this one. Five bucks at Walmart. And in order for this to be the most efficient it can be, you'll want to find the smallest cooler that you can find that is still large enough to fit all of your eggs. It doesn't necessarily have to be foam, you could get a plastic cooler, but since foam is the cheapest, that's what I went with. Once you have your cooler, we can begin to make a few modifications to it. My cooler came with this locking mechanism to help hold the lid in place, and I think that'll actually be quite useful. But as for this red handle, I don't have any use for it, so I'll go ahead and remove it. Next, although it is not entirely necessary, I like to be able to look into the incubator and regularly check on the eggs. So I'm going to install a Lexan window into the top of the container. So in order to do this, we'll begin by placing the Lexan in the center of the lid, right where we want the window to be. We'll then trace out the outline and cut it out using either a knife or if you have it, an electric foam cutting hot wire. With the hole cut out, we can now begin to frame the actual window. To do this, I'll be using foam board and my hot glue gun. And make sure you use glue with a relatively high melting point. We don't want the glue melting just from the heat of the incubator. But with that being said, since our incubator is only going to get up to about 90 degrees, it really shouldn't be that big of a deal. So to continue, we'll flip the lid over and hot glue one inch wide foam board pieces to the inside of the frame. We'll want to glue them so that at least half an inch sticks out over the edge. We'll now flip it back over and glue on a half inch wide foam perimeter to the pieces that stick out. And now that's built up to about half the thickness of the foam, we can drop in our Lexan and glue it in place. With the window now glued in place, we'll do exactly what we did for the bottom of the lid, only now in reverse. So that means glue half inch foam pieces to all the sides until they're flush with the top of the lid. and then glue on some wider foam pieces to connect the window to the rest of the lid and cover up some of the ugliness. And with that, the lid is now complete and we can move on to the inside of the incubator. For the inside, you're going to of course need a heat source. So I went down to the pet store and picked up a heating pad. And as you can see, it fits the side of the cooler almost perfectly. When picking out your heater, it's better to get one that's a little bit too large than too small. So I'm going to attach this to the side of the cooler, and then cut a small slit on the side of the cooler for the cord to go through. Just like that. Now we're going to want to control the temperature of the heating pad to make sure it doesn't get too hot or too cold. That's why I bought this temperature controller. Link in the description below. The temperature controller is great because it's super simple and easy to use. On second thought, maybe it's not that easy and the probe has more than enough wire to play jump rope with, so you can mount it anywhere you want to go. So since it has these small feet that stick out, I'm going to hot glue this foam base plate to it, and then hot glue that to the side of the cooler, just wherever I think it'll work the best. Next, we'll plug in the probe, put it through the same hole as the power cord, and then use electrical tape to mount it towards the center of the cooler, just like that. Now we'll plug in our heater to our temperature controller and straighten up the extra cords on the side. Now once we put on the lid and plug in the temperature controller, your incubator will be complete and ready for eggs. I'm very happy with how the incubator turned out and it works extremely well. Now that being said, although the temperature controller works perfectly and it can do a lot of different things, it is difficult to learn how to program it. So if you're looking for something super easy to use, this controller might not be for you, but it does work very well once you get it set. And there you have it, my egg incubator. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next Friday. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.